Hey folks, today we're talking about real world coherence. Coherence is a quality indicator on our data when we're using audio analyzers like Smart, Open Sound Meter, Rita, whatever. We need to be able to trust our data as we're capturing it as a very helpful metric to have. But I've often got the question, when I'm practicing in my home studio or somewhere else where I'm in the near field, my data looks great, but when I get in the venue, my coherence looks very jagged and it all goes to crap. So can we trust this? So let's unpack this a little bit, knowing when am I actually screwing up the measurement or something's actually getting in the way, or when is it just the room that's quite live, like this one, going to actually affect it, but you still need to get work done. So today I've got a Danley TH Mini sub here. We've just got this one on. There's another pair on the other side. And I've got my measurement microphone here. We're gonna start in the near field, very, very close to it. And the reason why I've chosen a subwoofer today is that's notorious for getting really hard to read data in the field as low frequencies. There's air conditioning, there's lifts rolling around. Uh, there's a lot of room reverberance. Uh, there is some sound damping in this room, but it's only about an inch thick, so it's not touching anything below about 500 hertz. So this is a big, empty, ringy room with a sub. We're gonna see what real world coherence looks like. Let's unpack it. Here we are at front of house. I'm running Smart as my analyzer today with my Evo 8 interface. The output is running directly into the power amp behind me into that Danley subwoofer. So no DSP, no consoles, no other anomalies. And I'm using the internal reference loopback as our reference signal today. And that's the comparison that's going on. So first I wanna show you an example of what good coherence looks like. And then we can talk about what happens when it all goes foobar. And I've started earlier in the video with the microphone right in front of the sub. And why is that going to get us good coherence? In short, because as close to it is a high signal to noise ratio. Because even this is, this is a pretty rough room, it's high ceilings, it's reverberant, there's no low frequency sound damping. Because that microphone is so close to the subwoofer, it's getting a lot of the signal compared to the amount of reverberance. It's like someone trying to hear, you're shouting across a cave and there's the decay times are so long it gets swimmy versus someone can whisper in a cave in your ear if they're very, very close to you. So that's the exact same thing. So let's look at our coherence uh, with this microphone really, really close to our sub. And we'll start to back it up and see what changes in our coherence. Another thing to know is you can also screw up the coherence by operating the software wrong. And I'll show you the ways you might do that and things you need to check for. So we're gonna kick out our generator. And I have the graph zoomed in from 20 hertz up to 400 so we can just focus on our low frequencies here. I'm gonna capture this. So sub, it's about six feet away and I have no measurement delay. That's the first thing you want to look for is we need to sync up our measurement in our reference signal. If we are referencing literally a different part of the waveform, then coherence is gonna be like, this isn't the same thing. We're literally comparing apples and Mustangs. Like it's not the same thing. So we need to sync them up. Low frequencies are a lot more forgiving because they are long wavelengths. So, uh, this is gonna show up much more quickly in a main speaker for measuring it. So it's tempting to not have to do it. Like I've got pretty good coherence and just in case you notice this red line at the top, but we can actually get it even better if we sync up what's going on. So how do we sync it up? We need to add delay to the measurement signal and we need to get the phase trace flat in the frequency area of interest for a subwoofer. So we're gonna add delay, kick on the generator, hide this measurement, I happen to know we need about 25 milliseconds of delay to take what was our phase trace from this like sloping down a whole lot and now it is flat throughout most of our sub range and that's what we want. We can maybe even do uh, 24, make it die down a little bit more and we are in good shape. So now we can see the coherence is even higher. Let me capture that. So sub six feet, 24 milliseconds of delay. And now let's compare these two. If I just hit Z to cycle through these, the coherence is largely the same. Again, low frequencies are more forgiving. And what it cares about, the microphone's very close to it. So now let's see what our co how our coherence changes as we back up the microphone onto the room. All right, so now I'm gonna take the microphone, move it out about mid depth. So about six feet away, and it's probably gonna be 30 feet away, something like that.
and we're still about on axis with the sub. It's directly in front of it. Subs are omnidirectional, so I don't really care about this table being in the way. It's going to bend right around it. So let's see if we're about midway out in the room, how our coherence is going to look. Does the frequency response change? How does this affect our decisions in the field? So now we're back here at front of house. The microphone's in the middle of the room, playing the test signal at the exact same level. We expect to see a level drop because it's farther away, but we need to see how our coherence changes. So let's see how introducing more noise swimming around because we're farther away affects the quality of our data. I've kicked on our generator again. We've of course seen a signal drop, but I want to see if I can now match up our phase trace again with where it was six feet away with 24 milliseconds of delay. So now I'm gonna add another 24, let's go to 48. Maybe a little much, let's go to 40. Maybe 45, getting closer. Boom. So it's not as pretty, we see this jagged area, uh, but even with this higher amount of averaging, which is helping reject some of the noise, we see the coherence is not amazing. So we're seeing, uh, let's capture this and we'll talk about it. So we were at 24 milliseconds of delay and now we're at 44. So let's just roughly estimate, you know, a millisecond per foot. So that's now adding 20 feet. So let's call that 26 feet and now 44 milliseconds of delay. I'm gonna clear this and let's compare these two measurements. So here's one at six feet away, and we can see this phase trace is very smooth. It's very sure of this data, and our coherence is telling us that is very high. And now if I cycle through to the other trace, the coherence is now starting to dip. And mind you, I'm at quarter height setting, so the coherence is not gonna go all the way down to this zero line. So I'm now gonna move up this arrow, which is the coherence blanking threshold, which means if the, qual the data is not above a certain coherence value, it's gonna to start to blank it out. So if I slowly move it up, I'm here now at 20% and a bunch has disappeared. Now I'm gonna move it up some more and even more is disappearing. Uh, once I get above the 75%, this is where we're at. So it's very sure of what's happening down here at 45 Hertz but here in between at 57 and here at 73 and now at 87, it's blanked out here. So that means, ah, I'm not really sure if this is signal or is it noise? So we're also seeing a change pretty heavily in the frequency response. I can hold shift and click here in the middle. It's gonna normalize these traces to each other. And they are following in general the same path, but we are seeing this dip here at 71 and we're seeing low coherence. So this tells me there's a reflection of some sort. There's a room mode that's happening. So if I'm seeing a big dip with also in magnitude with also a big dip in frequency response, that tells me there's something interacting with the sub or that actually in this case, the subwoofer, but could be the speaker. So that's telling me the coherence is trying to tell me something of like, I don't know about this. And so it's expecting <laughs> to get the signal it was out of the sub, but it's not anymore. And that I think is probably due to a room mode. And that's something we cannot control. So this is telling me I should not try and EQ this out. So in this case, coherence is giving me a good quality indicator of like, I'm not sure if this is gonna stick over the space because it wasn't originally with the sub. And that's why we need to have a good near fold measurement of every speaker we're trying to work with because that is our standard. So again, I expect coherence to drop because we're so far away but we can still make decisions with it. Granted, let's move the microphone even farther and the coherence is gonna get really rough and like, well, what do we do now? Can we trust this data? Let's talk about it. And now we're probably gonna be 50 feet away, something like that. So this is a much longer distance for the waveform to travel. It's gonna be lower in level. I might end up pushing the generator a little bit more so we can get a little bit higher. Um, but we'll say, pushing the generator louder isn't necessarily going to get us higher coherence. We only have to be above the noise floor to a certain degree. So let's actually look at the noise floor in this room and see how low we need to get it to get good data. Now back in the machine, I have the microphone here pretty close to me, only about five feet in front of here, about 50 feet away from the subwoofer. I've now put it in spectrum mode. And I can now see with the, my voice is now coming in the microphone, but within the subwoofer range, we're seeing this swim around here. And to get good data, at minimum, we need to be about 10 dB above the noise floor. So this is something I'm checking. I know I'd be 
above it if I'm that close to the subwoofer, but that is a minimum to make sure we have good coherence. So let me kick on the generator. And I, and I can see here that in the majority of the range, 63 hertz up here to 125, I can even turn up the banding. Let's go to one third octave and let's try that again. So the resting noise floor at 125, about negative 80. Now we're way up here to neg 55. So we're good there. This is moving high enough. So yeah, so we are above the noise floor, even though we're far away. So I do not have to crank up my generator and do a super loud measurement. Hit T, move back here to transfer function view. And now I'm gonna add more delay and see if I can do my best to sync up this measurement to be where it was in the near field. So let's try 60 milliseconds of delay, 65, 70, 75, 80, I think it's all a little bit too much. Again, our coherence is not amazing. <laughs> We're pretty far away, so I'm having a hard time figuring out where we need to land. Let me go back to 70. And this is where I think a lot of people have trouble is when the data gets kind of hazy to read, uh, you start to make mistakes because again, it's like trying to read a overexposed uh, x-ray. It's just like, it's not just good data. Uh, let me go back to where we were 44 and start over. Again, it's just even hard for me to kind of guesstimate. Let me just go in five millisecond increments. This I'm seeing, I, I can look for my highly coherent data, which is probably right here and see where I get to line up and see where the rest can. 65, still pretty tough. Let me turn up my averaging, another way to kind of look at it, or my smoothing. Let's go to 62. Yeah, I think that's where we're gonna end up. Go back to 1 12th. Again, normalize it, hold shift. Let's capture. So let's just call this 50 feet. And then 62 milliseconds of delay. All right. So now unpacking all four of these measurements at six feet, very high coherence, very easy to read data middle of the audience, okay, coherence, a little bit easier to read. And now we're way back in the room and this is FUBAR. <laughs> very, 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 very hard to read because the data is the not very sure of what it's getting because there's so much noise. And by noise, not necessarily the air conditioning, not you know people walking in other parts of the building, there's reflections, there's reverberance, and that's okay. I'll just say you do not do anything wrong with this measurement if your data looks like this in the field. It's just us moving farther away from the sound source, being in a reverberant room. So we can still make good decisions with this data, but we just have to be careful what decisions we pull from it. I'm going to prioritize more highly coherent data than not very coherent data. You can get really dangerous, you hit the C key in smart and it actually makes your coherence uh, meter disappear. Oh, it's easier to read, <laughs> like whatever. And then the, the temptation is to turn on a bunch of smoothing and they're like, oh wow, I got it. But there's a, a really careful dance of doing enough smoothing for you to be able to make decisions quickly, but not do so much that you're just glossing over and missing the detail. Coherence is one of the most important indicators of your uh, quality in your data. Well, I mean, that's its, its job completely. Um, it's something to be considered, but know that we can still make decisions with it and see trends. Because if I remove our trace offsets, I do command Y, I actually see that our sub here at the top versus the middle of the audience versus the very back, um, it actually didn't change in level a whole lot, which is interesting to me. So even though we moved the microphone back and we did not change our measurement signal, we didn't change our mic preamp gain. Uh, so that's something to think about. Like, okay, why did the middle of the audience and the back of the audience not change all that much? Interesting. Uh, but this is something we expected to happen. So I just wanted to show the progression of very coherent, easy to read data, kind of muddy data, then not so great data because of the room. You didn't do anything wrong. We still need to sync up our measurements uh, with between with our delay finders. And again, it's hard to with the sub since it's, it can't easily find it with the delay tracker. Uh, but Data is going to get messy, especially if you're in an arena, even longer decay times. But you can still work through it. Just be careful not to use too much smoothing um, and prioritize looking at more coherent data over not. 
My name is Michael Curtis. I love helping you make your sound system sound amazing. Uh, catch you next time.